Hi and welcome, this is Lee Waller. In this video, I'm taking a look at Unreal Engine 5.4's new motion design tools. Now, I come from a background of motion media design working in After Effects, Cinema 4D, Blender, and so Unreal Engine's new motion design tools are very interesting to me. I've worked in Unreal Engine a little bit, experimenting with cinematic storytelling, so I'm not completely new to Unreal Engine. I've produced a previous tutorial in which I share the preferences that I use to set up Unreal Engine so the workflow is a little bit more familiar. So if you haven't watched that, I recommend taking a look at it. In this tutorial, I'm going to cover the basic interface that we're looking at right now. And from there, I'll continue in other tutorials building out some projects. So let's get started. In the upper left hand corner, you'll see the tab bar labeled main. This is the current level that we're working on. You can have multiple levels in an Unreal project. Underneath that tab is the Level Editor Toolbar. It starts with the Save button, and of course, as usual, this will save any work that you've completed. Next to that is the Browse button, and when we click this, it's going to open up the Content Drawer. Now, the Content Drawer is a little bit different. It's kind of like a bin, but this can get very detailed. It's the place that you're going to organize all of your content that you import, create, and work with. The drop down menu next to that displays the editor modes. Each mode is designed for different purposes. Sometimes I'll work in the selection mode, or the modeling mode, and of course, the new motion design mode. Next to that is the Content Plus button. This button presents you with multiple options for importing and adding content to your project. Our first option is to import content that you might already have access to. Below that is Quixel Bridge. This is a virtual warehouse of assets that are free that you can download and import into your projects to use. The Unreal Marketplace is another online source where you can purchase assets. As I've already mentioned, you have the content browser. You can select that from here. There's also a button down here at the bottom for the content drawer. You can open that up and expand that. Below that are a number of other options to place all types of content or actors as Unreal Engine classifies them. Lights, virtual cameras and rigs, visual effects, shapes, media plates, and other content for your production. Blueprints in Unreal are used to add programming capabilities to your project and is mostly for games, but can be used for any type of production. The Cinematics button adds either a level sequence or master sequence to your project. It is in the sequence that you animate your actors. It is similar to the composition timeline in After Effects. The Play In Controls allows you to test your game. It is also useful for testing your animation and a good way to check to make sure your motion design is going to render as expected. I'm going to move over to the far right and take a look at the Motion Design button. This opens and closes the Motion Design Editor interface. I'm going to click that once and we jump out of the Motion Design mode and we're left in Selection mode. I'm going to jump back into it and that will bring back all of our motion design tools. I have found that when I first come into the motion design editor, some options were missing. It would only bring up the 2D shapes, 3D shapes, and actors. So by clicking out of the motion design option, then clicking back into it, the meshes, cameras, and lights were added. The toolbar below that starts with the operator stack. Clicking on that will open up the operator stack over here in the panels to the far right. In the operator stack are modifiers and animators. These are tools that can be added to our actors to add animation and functionality. The material designer is one of the new motion design tools. It is a simpler way of adding materials and textures to your actors. You can see that our floor does not have a material on it. So if I want to create a material for that, I can go into the Material Designer and begin to create a material for that. I'll switch it from Texture to Solid Color, and we'll choose a color and hit OK on that. And then I'll close that out, and you can see I've created a blue material for that floor. The Create Defaults button is also a new motion design tool. This creates a set of actors for motion design projects that sets up lighting and a camera for the scene. 
In a previous tutorial, I've already added those, and you'll find them in the Motion Design Outliner right here under Default Scene. To the far left of the editor is the Motion Design panel, and it's broken up into several different tabs that all contain tools for creating actors for your design. 2D and 3D shapes, actors, meshes, cameras, and lights. To demonstrate, I'll go to the 3D tab and double click on the cube. Now a cube has been created in the viewport and is also listed in the motion design outliner. The viewport is the visual display of your work. As you'll see in this scene, there's a floor, a back wall, and the cube. Now I'm gonna take a look at the panels to the far right of the editor. The first is the motion design outliner. In the outliner, you'll find all of the objects slash actors that are in your scene. The outliner is used to organize and interact with the content in your scene. Clicking on an actor in the outliner selects it in the viewport and displays its details in the details panel below. So I select the cube in the outliner, it's selected in the viewport, and its details are down here in the details panel. Each actor will have a different set of details. Common details you will find are transform properties, material options, for shapes you will have shape options, you'll also have lighting options, and a host of other options that you can work with. At the bottom of the editor is the sequencer. This is where you will keyframe and tweak any actor that will be animated. The actors are added to the sequencer and based on the actor and the animation, properties for animating will be added. In the sequencer, you can set frame rate, animation duration, and set up the render movie queue for animations. So I'll take the cube real quick, bring it into the sequencer. I'm going to add transform properties for it. Open up, you'll see that we have location, rotation, and scale. I'm going to go ahead and just animate this on location. I'll move it over to the far left. Open up my location properties. Set a keyframe for those three. And I'll move in the timeline just a little bit and bring this over to the right. And then make sure I set those keyframes again. Using the transfer controls, I'll jump back to the front and then we'll hit play. And there's our animation. To change the frame rate, for motion design, it defaults at 5994, but you have the option to open that up and set it to whatever frame rate you would like. You can also initiate the render process by clicking the Render Movie button. And in another tutorial, I'll take a look at how I render out my animations. Of course, there's a lot more to Unreal Engine, and this is just a simple rundown of the basic user interface. In upcoming tutorials, I will dig deeper into Unreal Engine's motion design tools, so I hope you will hit the like and subscribe buttons, and see you soon.